Oh, Brosnan has to go down and save. And it's in the net, and Wales have taken the lead. And that's towards Hughes. Nice little touch on towards Fishnock, and a chance here. And Brosnan's beaten again. It's Lily Woodham. The left back has scored. This is an extra time.com podcast. I'm Oshin Langan. There's very little League of Ireland and no voice notes in this, hence the tweak on the name of the podcast. We are concentrating on the Republic of Ireland's 2 0 defeat to Wales in their friendly in front of 8,218 fans at Tala Stadium. That's the biggest crowd they've ever had there for a women's international. Now, in the introduction, you heard the commentary of George Hamilton describing the two Welsh goals. If you didn't catch the match, you can watch it back in full on the RTE player. Extratime.com's MacDara Ferris was there for us. We'll chat to him in a moment. But first, here is what Republic of Ireland manager Eileen Gleeson made of her team's performance. Yeah, obviously, like, super disappointed with the performance. You know, I think the first half was, you know, not anything we anticipated. And we felt we didn't really do the simple things well at all. So, you know, pick up your runner off the corner. That's a simple thing. Take care of the ball. We, we gave it away very cheaply, we'd, we'd slow decision making, we were playing passes into crowded areas, straight balls, giving it away, back up and then, you know, pick, not picking up the overload in, in the midfield. So these are simple things that you can affect whether, you know, Fatty has to come out or whether Dan has to come in. They're not really related to that, they're not related to whether you're in a back four or you're a back five or a back three. They're the simple things that you have to do well and I feel that we didn't, we definitely didn't do them well in the, the first half second half was a bit better and you see that we, we changed it but we changed that to get the two strikers on I think you know Kira and Emily gave us a good um, good partnership Emily very good debut you can see and there's, there's more to come from her but they allowed us to hold the ball up with the play a bit better and yeah, but we gave ourselves way too much to do from the first half and, you know where to also well, the team probably like for like for us, in terms of profile of players, in terms of the level they play at, in terms of the leagues that they play in, so it was never going to be easy tonight. Um, and you know, Wales have a lot of experience playing in um, League A, Germany, Denmark, Iceland. So you know, they're a good, solid team. Um, we feel we had a really positive performance in Italy. Maybe there's a little bit of lag from that game in terms of how we had to manage players loads and fatigues and injuries so but look, there's, there's no excuses it was, just wasn't like where it should have been um, and we just didn't do the same things well enough especially the first This is an extratime.com podcast looking back on the Republic of Ireland's 2-0 defeat to Wales last night at Tallaght Stadium that was the manager Eileen Gleeson Jess Zoo has been through the ringer regards injury so it was great to see her not only play last night but also be awarded player of the match after the game she spoke to extratime.com's MacDara Ferris yeah well I'm naturally um, a 10 so I like to get on the ball and turn and we're not players so when Ilo said at half time you're going to go into the 10 I was really excited but I also think with our pocket players in the first half we kind of play quite narrow either way so yeah I'm, I can play anywhere top top three in terms of player of the match I actually don't think one of us probably deserved it um, we didn't get at them enough we didn't didn't take any any shots at the goalkeeper I think that happened too with Italy like we just we need to get at teams a bit more I think um, but like I said we'll just take it all in and we'll improve on it for next camp What do you think the difference is between Friday night you put in an excellent performance in Florence against Italy who are a highly ranked team you know Wales are a little bit ranked below Ireland what do you think the difference is between last Friday night and I, tonight I actually think their formation kind of caught us off guard with a new manager we kind of went into the game not knowing whether they'll play a 5 or a 4 um, and they ended up playing a 5 so I do think that kind of caught us off guard where with Italy we just matched up forward to back forward to back vice versa and so yeah I think that kind of caught us off guard a little we just didn't adapt to it quick enough and from your own point of view excitement when you got on the ball because you were taking players on that's what spectators like to see it was a big crowd here in in Tallis Stadium it's something I'm sure you'll you'll take away and look to bring back to your club form as well yeah definitely um, I just hope I can get on the ball and actually have an end product uh, for the next camp coming up Player of the match, Jess Zhu, speaking to ExtraTime.com's MacDara Ferris, who joins us now from the environs of Tala Stadium. Um, he's not in the stadium, but he's around it. MacDara, I hope and I trust you're safe and warm. I am. I'm in my car, my stationary car. I'm parked up uh, outside Tala Stadium after the game in Tala on Tuesday night. 
well, you might as well stay there because you're back there on Friday night. Anyway, we'll get <laughs> to that in a bit of a while. Uh, Eileen Gleeson said they didn't play well. It wasn't so much the formation. It was the fact that they made very basic errors. But aside from that, she said she was kind of at a loss to explain the performance in this 2-0 defeat to Wales. Maybe you can add a bit of meat to the bones. Maybe you can explain it. Yeah, it was it was a bit disappointing because they were very good on Friday in Florence against Italy. They drew nil all. Italy are ranked, um, you know, about, I think, eight positions higher maybe than Ireland um, and are also are in the, the group that Ireland are going to be drawn out. One of the teams that Ireland could be drawn out to face in the Euro 2025 qualifiers. That draw is happening in, in UEFA HQ and Neon next next week. Um, and they were playing against a well side who got relegated out of that league A environment. They had had drawn with Germany nil all in their Nations League, Nations League games. But, um, you know, Ireland had won all six of the, of the games under Eileen Gleeson. Um, they'd only conceded two goals in her seven games and yet they'd conceded two goals within... 22 minutes. They seemed to just be caught cold at, at the start. There was the disruption to Neve Fahey, uh, who had a an IT ban issue, I think it was, um, that she had to drop out. But um, they gave away a couple of really sloppy goals. They allowed Wales kind of move the ball, um, you know, from right to left. They gave away a number of, of early uh, concessions of corners. Um, and really, they didn't have a lot going forward in, in the first half, probably missing... Um, particularly the likes of maybe Denise O'Sullivan, who brings so much, um, you know, attacking options to to Ireland. Um, they went with this flat, flat back four, which they'd used in Florence on Friday. Um, but at half time, you know, it was pretty clear it hadn't been working. Eileen Gleeson made three changes. Uh, they switched formations. They went with a back three. They pushed two up front. Um, people maybe if they're watching on mightn't have seen you know Katie McCabe seemed a little bit frustrated with Leanne Kiernan playing in front of her McCabe was playing left back Kiernan in front of her she doesn't really play in that position an awful lot uh, so she was one of the players Kiernan was one of the players withdrawn at half time um, and Emily Murphy came on for her debut and I thought she was excellent um, and Ireland were much better in the second half, but um, they didn't really create an awful lot of chances. Caitlin Hayes really uh, had her laid on, was probably as close as the game. So yeah, maybe a little bit perplexing as to what the difference was between you know Friday and, and this evening, but plenty, as Eileen Gleeson said, to go away for her to have a look at um, in the videos over the next while. And uh, you know they'll be, they'll be better for that, probably better for that defeat. Is it a case that we shouldn't look too much into it because it was only a friendly or do you have worries about us after this game? Well, it, it's, you know, you have the likes of Jessie Stapleton coming in. You know, she's only played a, a very small number of games for for Ireland. Um, but the rest of the players are, you know, quite experienced with the exception of maybe Kiernan and, and Jess Zhu, who was a player of the match on the night. I certainly thought she... Um, she played excellently and uh, deserved that kind of player of the match. She she really took the ball at at the Welsh defence, and and she joked afterwards she's hoped to be a bit more uh, maybe end product at the at the end of it. But I, I suppose maybe a little bit worrying. But there's very few friendly matches now in international football, be it men's or women's. It's it's qualifiers, it's Nations League, and I suppose when a friendly comes around, you're probably looking to do something a little bit different, which is why Gleeson went with a different formation in the last two games, um, you know, when really all that stake is is kind of FIFA ranking points, which really aren't worth that much when there's there's so many competitive games coming around because even uh, UEFA have landed in even more playoffs now onto tops of playoffs. So that there's there's always a competitive game coming around. So if there's maybe a, a result where you don't want to go your way, it's probably maybe this, this game against Wales, probably better off for... Doing well against um, against Italy. Um, the only thing is that in front of what was a record crowd for a women's international in Tallis Stadium, just over eight thousand, um, you probably want to put on a better. Certainly, you want to put on a better display than than the girls in green showed uh, this evening. Was it a case? And this might seem a bit harsh, considering we got that draw away to Italy, who are a very decent team, as you've outlined. Was it a case of we kind of cruised through the Nations League, but we? And we were good, but we only beat teams we should be beating. And and maybe last night, as it uh, was, if you're listening to this, um, was a bit of a reality check. Or again, am I just 
Am I just kind of going with scoreboard journalism there? No, not really, because Ireland didn't deserve anything more uh, out of the game. It wasn't a case of a uh, performance deserved more. Um, and yeah, like I, I would have, you know, I was at all the home Nations League games. It was up in Belfast for for the win over Northern Ireland. But Ireland were head and shoulders above all the opposition that they played in, in the Nations League. And they want to be, if you want to be qualifying for tournaments, you want to be ranked in in the top 16 in Europe to give you this opportunity. Like Ireland, no matter what happens in the qualifiers, um, we'll be in a group w- with four teams in total, including Ireland. Top two teams automatically qualify for the Euros. Third and fourth place, even in League A, get a, gets a playoff. So you want to be in this position. So, um, yeah, the worrying thing is then you need to perform when you're you're playing against these teams. But as I say, Ireland are... Um, uh, Italy are, are ranked in that top size. Ireland played France just ahead of the World Cup. Um, you know, a French side that went to the World Cup that are also in that as in in that draw as well. So, um, the expectation is really we will be beating all the teams in League B. You know, Albania aren't. Um, you know, they're they're not at that level. This Welsh team have gone close to qualifying for European Championships, but and World Cups, but haven't. Um. And a little bit, one of the players mentioned afterwards, they were just a little bit unsure as to how yeah. Wales were going to play because they lost their manager. She's gone off to manage Norway. They had an interim manager in place, John Gray, uh, on Tuesday night, even though they'd named, um, uh, I think it's Wilkinson, a former Canadian international, as their new manager. And she was there in Tallaght tonight, but it was John Gray who, who picked the team. So, you know, Wales are, are in and around our level. Um, if you look at the rankings, um, but they certainly look better than us uh, on the performance uh, on Tuesday evening. And just before we move on, the Republic of Ireland women's team have built up this huge following, but I would suggest it's a following that's still growing. So when you're covering them, you nearly have to cater for those people who know the ins and outs of the team and those who don't. And it's a bit like Jack Charlton's Ireland in 88 and 90 when soccer just exploded. Well, more so the team itself. Unfortunately, soccer itself did explode and we're still pay- paying the price for that. But anyway, that is a very different debate for another day. Um, should we be expecting this team to qualify for the Euros? Like, would it be a massive disappointment if they did be- didn't? Because it, it strikes me that, unlike the men's team, you cannot say they don't have the players. They, they really seem to have the players. Yeah, like the if you look through the squad, there's a lot of players playing in the WSL or players playing just at the championship level, the likes of uh, London City, Lionesses and Birmingham City as well. Um, you know, so very high quality, you know, you've Dean Sullivan playing, you know, at a very high level in, in, in America. And even I suppose Amber Barrett and Clara Reardon playing um in in Belgium as well. So you have players playing in 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 really good clubs. The difficulty will be I, I don't think there's an expectation that we'd finish in the top two um in in this Euro group, but the potential is if you finish um, third in the group, you go into a first round playoff against a team which is essentially from League C, who would definitely be better than. Um, then there's and you are seeded as well in that group as well. So um, I don't know whether you could say it's it'd be disappointing. Like in the men's game, you know the European level is is very very high. So for teams to qualify out of Europe for uh, you know, for a World Cup, it's very similar to a Euros. Um, and I say there's there's sixteen, there's only sixteen positions available for Euros, and one of them is for the the host Switzerland. Um, so it is difficult, but I, I think the expectation is that Ireland, um, no matter what happens, as I say, they will be within one of those playoffs. But um, you've you've two playoffs to get through if if you are in that third or fourth position. So, um. The I suppose the expectation is we would get to the playoff final if I can if I can call it that, and then you're down to, you know, who you draw, and that's absolutely in the the lap of the gods at this stage ahead of of any of any qualifiers. But you know, having got to the World Cup last time, qualifying out of a group with Sweden, uh, who did run away with the group, but Ireland got a very credible nil all draw in Gothenburg, which which really cemented their runners up spot in that group, and then allowed them to get into. The playoff where, you know, people will remember Amber Barrett scoring against uh, Scotland. Um, mm. So so that would be the hope that we'd, we'd put ourselves in a position to to win a playoff to to get to European Championships. But, you know, sides like Northern Ireland have made European Championships and, and you know, we've certainly come on since uh, the North played in, in the Euros where they've, they've gone the other way. 
Certainly. OK, the Republic of Ireland losing 2-0 last night, as you listen, in a friendly at Tala Stadium against Wales. We won't get too carried away either way. Speaking about not getting too carried away either way, it hasn't been a particularly good start for Shamrock Rovers in the SSE Electricity a League of Ireland Premier Division. But Magdara, we've been here before, haven't we? And when Stephen Bradley said he was uh, irritated with his team's performance in the defeat to Shelburne and that this is different to before when they started slowly, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it at all. Well, interesting. It's an even worse start than they had last season. So people might remember it took them to their seventh game last season to to win a match. But they drew their two opening games, whereas this time around... Um, they drew their first game of the season, but as you say, lost uh, to Shelburne on Friday night. Um, now, I, I thought it was listening to Stephen Bradley's comments after the game. It, you know, he was he was very scathing about his yeah. defensive, his team's defensive performance. In the first and was he half. this scathing this time last year? And even no. the season before? No, okay, so no, he so wasn't. there is a, so genuinely, for all my joking, there is an actual difference. Yeah. Now, what I would say is, last year there was a lot of you know, and he, like a lot of managers, will talk about you know, the performance and, you know, that's what they're concentrating on, the, the the process, the performance. And when you looked at the the statistics last year in terms of, you know, you know various, various metrics, Rovers should have done better than they did in those opening six games when, where they failed to, to win a match. What I would say about last week, uh, and I was at the game on Friday, is they were very poor in the first half. They were much better in the second half. They got a real boost from Graham Burke coming off the bench. But they had to, you know, they're missing their two, Wing backs, they got injured, Trevor Clark and Neil Ferrugia in the first 45 minutes of the season against Dundalk. Um, when those two players were missing last year, it was in the middle of the season where Rovers had that sticky patch through July where they they failed to win a game. They only scored one goal and that was a penalty kick. Um, so so on Friday against Shells, they were missing them. Uh, Josh Honan played uh, wing back. Sean Hoare was in the middle. Hoare went off injured after 30 minutes. That necessitated Honan coming into the middle, um, Marcus Poom came on as wing back. Uh, he was maybe lucky to see out the game for an incident with a ball boy, but maybe less said about that, the the, the better. Um, but Rovers had to shuttle around a lot, particularly in the second half. And uh, Shelburne were hanging on. Like Rovers had two thirds of the possession, did way more shots, uh, way more shots on target. But mm -hmm. Shells were well worth, uh, cer certainly... Um, certainly a draw would have maybe been, uh, you know, a fair result. But I think Shelburne, Defended well enough to restrict Rovers to, you know, late, late pressure with a number of, of corner kicks. So, you know, coming in now to this weekend, they have uh, Drada United at home on Friday. And then everyone plays again on Monday night. Rovers have another home game. They're playing Derry City. So they won't want to come into the game on Monday night against Derry City, who are, you know, realistically going to be one of the teams up towards the, the top of the table. Um you know, in, in challenging for the league title, Rovers won't want to come into that game not, um, you know, with only, you know, maybe two points or, or only one point. They'll certainly be targeting a win against Friday United, who were a bit of a bogey team for Rovers last year up until late on in the season when Rovers, I think it was 5-0 that they won in Tala towards the end of the season, which really was the... Um, it set them up then to go the next week to to beat St. Patrick's Athletic in Inchicore and win the title. So... Um, they've kind of put that bogey team uh, behind them a little bit with the Boyne Siders with that with that last win, but um, you know, so they'll certainly be targeting the the three points on Friday to carry a bit of momentum rather than add any pressure on uh, ahead of that game on Monday night against Terry City. Okay, you've been listening to Macdara Ferris of ExtraTime.com and the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast. Uh, our primary focus for this podcast was the Republic of Ireland's 2-0 defeat to Wales, but Macdara is heading along to Shamrock Rovers' match on Friday night against Strada, and he'll be going again on Monday night when they play Derry City, so we said we'd ask him about that. Um, as I say, you've been listening to Macdara. You can read Macdara on ExtraTime.com. Macdara Ferris, thanks for joining us uh, from just outside Tala Stadium where you watch the Republic of Ireland lose 2-0 to Wales in an international friendly. Thanks, Oisin. Well, that's almost it for this extratime.com podcast. Not quite a voice notes podcast, not quite a League of Ireland podcast, hence the tweak of the name. Full coverage of the SSE Airtricity League of Ireland Premier Division and First Division games on Friday night through extratime.com. 
Bowles taking on Dundalk, Derry City up against St. Pat's, Galway taking on Waterford, Sligo Rovers up against Shelburne and Shamrock Rovers up against Drogheda United in the game we just spoke about. All of those games kick off at 7.45 with the exception of the Rovers Drogheda game that's away at 8 o'clock well it's it's not a horse it's not away at 8 o'clock it kicks off at 8 o'clock in the first division on Friday Bray take on Longford Cork City are up against UCD Finn Harps meet at Lone Kerry take on Treaty United and Wexford play Cove Ramblers all of those games kick off at 7.45 the Women's President's Cup is on Saturday it kicks off at 5 o'clock at Lone Town taking on Peamount and we might as well run through the Monday fixtures as well in the Premier Division, it's Drogheda United against Bowes, Dundalk taking on Sligo Rovers, Shelburne up against Galway United, Waterford hosting St. Pat's and Shamrock Rovers up against Derry City. Again, all of those games, except the one at Tala, kick off at 7.45 and Tala, they're underway at 8 o'clock. Now, there is a deep dive into everything that's happening in the League of Ireland, available through extratime.com. Luke, Donald and I uh, chatted on the extratime.com League of Ireland podcast. Reese. Hutchinson of Sligo Rovers also joined Luke for a chat about how he's finding things in the League of Ireland and how uh, things are going at Sligo Rovers early in the season. Not bad, I would suggest. An ill-all draw with Derry last Saturday night in the showgrounds and before that a two-all draw away to Bowles at Daily Mount Park, a game that they probably should have won. Uh, one thing we didn't get to chat about actually in that podcast, and I did want to say it, I just forgot, um, was for all the talk of Caulfield Ball, Galway United constructed their goals really well against Dundalk last Friday night. They won 2-0 and for the first one, A. Dervin hit a beautiful through ball which Hurley ran onto and then squared it. It was finished well by, um, I think it was Ed McCarthy. And with the second goal, A. Dervin was involved again. Regan Donnellan delivered a great ball in from the left-hand side and A. Dervin ran onto it and looped it over the goalkeeper, Shelby, who probably should have done better or could have done better. Now, I'm not a goalkeeper, so maybe I'm being harsh on him there, but he was standing off his line and he didn't even raise his hands. He might not have got to it, even if he did, but it didn't look particularly great. As with all games this early in the season and all results and everything that's happening, you don't want to get carried away either way because it is quite early in the season. Uh, Don't forget to check out extratime.com for everything on the League of Ireland and everything that's happening in Irish football. You can get in contact with me through at Oisín Langan. I'll be back with another extratime.com League of Ireland voice notes podcast uh, late on Friday or very early on Saturday morning. Thanks for joining us for this special podcast covering uh, the Republic of Ireland's 2-0 defeat to Wales. I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.